Hey everyone, welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we'll be looking at how we can make our user profile screens more awesome by giving our users the ability to create their own 3D avatar that reflects their image and personality. So I will show us what we'll be creating today uh, to see how it works and what it looks like. So we have this app and here we start with our 3D avatar main screen, which is to choose a body type. And here I'll choose and we can also upload a picture if we want it to reflect our likeness even closer. Or we can go without a picture and select one of the default avatars here as a base to start with. So I'll go ahead and select one. And after that's loaded, we are here presented with a bunch of options to modify the avatar that so that it best reflect our own image and likeness so we can choose the skin color whatever our skin color or tone is we have the ability to modify the face we can bring it closer to the head modify the face shape and as you can see there are other options here so we can create our own avatar as we see fit then we can add clothing as you can see some of the clothing are powered by some brands we can add accessories we can add head headwear and then when we're finished we click next and we can, if we are going to be able to edit the avatar, we'll need to sign up to the SDK which I'm using, which is a Ready Player Me uh, SDK to create these avatars. But for now, I'm just going to continue without signing up. And so we'll have a 2D rendering of our avatar and a 3D rendering of our avatar. So if I go to 3D and wait for that to load, as you can see, this is a 3D rendering of my avatar and I have some hard-coded information here about um, my profile. So I, I use a 3D avatar to reflect, to represent me and then I have the information here on my profile screen. And if I go to 2D, then it will generate a 2D rendering of my 3D avatar again that best reflect the image that I am trying to portray. So this is what we're going to create today. And you guys can add it in your own projects so that you can add some flair to your profile screens and make it more awesome. So to get started, we'll first need to head on over to readyplayer.me. And this is the SDK that I am using to, to create the avatars. So head on over here and you need to sign up as a developer. So you go as a developer, you signed up as a developer and you'll select this one, sign up to studio or if you want to create assets or brands, you can submit your, your assets here, like your clothing uh, and other accessories. But for the developer, we we'll go here, we sign up as a developer. Now when you sign up as a developer, you will receive a subdomain, subdomain and that is what you'll use in your in the API when creating the avatars or when accessing the avatar creator so that it's unique to your developer profile. So once we get that up and running and we're back over in Flutter, we can set up a few packages here that I am going to use. So the packages that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the web view since Ready Play Me does not provide a package or a plugin for Flutter. So I'm going to use the web view instead. I'm going to use a shared preference just that I might uh, store my avatar information locally, Google Fonts, and also toggle switch this uh, package that I'll use to toggle between 3D and the 2D avatar so once that is up and ready and we have those installed we can go over to our main dart here and we'll begin to create our 
screen that reflects our avatar creator. So for the body, I'm just going to remove the body here and remove the title here. And for our app bar, I'm going to make the background color transparent. I'm going to make the elevation zero and I'm also going to set the system style to dark. And now for the body, this is where I'm going to use the web view. So I'm going to say web view. And then for some options for the web view, I am going to set the JavaScript options. So set the JavaScript mode, I'm going to set that to unrestricted. So we are able to execute JavaScript code. Cause we'll be using JavaScript. I'm also going to set the JavaScript channels because this is what I'm going to use to communicate from the web view to the Flutter application. So I'm going to create a JavaScript channel here. I'm going to name the channel and then whenever this message is sent, then it will execute this method and we can do some operations here. So for now, I'm just going to debug. I'm just going to debug print whatever is passed over. For the web view, we also need the on web view created method. So whenever the web view is created there, it will give us a, a controller as the, the, the parameter in the callback. And then what we'll need to do whenever we retrieve that controller or whenever the, this method is called on created web view, that's where we want to load now the avatar creator. So whenever this is called or whenever this event happens, I am going to see a wait and I'm going to see load HTML. I'm going to create a method called load HTML from assets. And I'm going to pass the controller there and the name of the asset. And in this case, the name of the asset will be an HTML file. So I'm going to call this file iframe.html. So what I've done here is to create that method and all that method does, it simply loads the HTML file from the bundle. So we have the, we load the HTML file and then we tell the controller to load the URL that's produced for the HTML file itself. So now we're basically just loading that HTML file inside of the web view. So we can go ahead, import our utils. Now let's create a folder called assets. Move that to the root. Then inside that asset folder, that's where I'll create my HTML file. So I'll create my iframe.html. So now we have our HTML file here. Let's add our HTML syntax. So here's our base HTML syntax by setting the doc type, the HTML tags, and a body tag. And inside of our body tag, for now, we can see set the h1 and a paragraph. And now we can run our app and see if it renders this HTML file. So if you run your app, you can see that there's an error. It throws an error here. And the reason it throws that error is because inside of our pub spec, 
we need to allow it to access that asset uh, folder here. So let's remove that and then give it access to our assets folder. Let's save. So now if we run again, then we should see our HTML being rendered here. So what we have inside of our iframe, my first heading and that paragraph that's rendered. So we know that our HTML file is being rendered inside of our web view. Let's go ahead and remove this and also inside of our material app to turn off that debug banner. So now that's working. So for our HTML file, now this is where we will be loading up the avatar creator from Ready Player Me and presenting that to the user so that they can use the tool to create their own avatars. So if we go over to Ready Player Me, as you should have signed up by now, and if we go to the docs, if we go to the docs and we go to the 3D avatar API, then we, we have some information here as to how we can render our avatars and the kind of requests we can make. But if we go to our avatar creator, we'll also get some more information as to how, how it works. And if we jump down to the SDKs and integration and go to web, then we'll see an example here from GitHub where we can go and copy that code and see how it works. I already have that code modified, so I'm just going to paste that inside my HTML with the other modifications that I've added and then explain what's happening. So here I have the code, the full HTML code. Um, inside my iframe.html file now. And we have our header tag here with a few meta information, which tells the, the renderer how to treat with the content in terms of the width, um, that sort of thing. We have a few styling inside of our style tag. And basically I am just telling the frame to assume 100% height and width of the device and with zero margin. Inside of our body tag, as you can see, everything is being rendered in an iframe. And the iframe, we can allow access to microphone and to, cam to the camera so that persons can take pictures of themselves or upload pictures of themselves uh, to create their avatar. And we are associating with it the frame class. Now this is the class that we created in our style sheet so that it, this class is now apply to the iframe so that it fill the entire screen. And this is where everything happens inside of a script tag. Again, this is JavaScript, which determines how we access Ready Player Me for the avatar creator and the sort of events that we are subscribing to from the avatar creator. So the first thing we, I added my subdomain here. This is a subdomain that you will receive when you create the, your developer account. So you, you put your subdomain and then you will get the frame, get element by ID. And I'm assuming that you might not be uh, familiar with HTML, but if you're already familiar with HTML, then these things will be um, very simple to you. So I'm basically using JavaScript to access the document and document here means the entire web view that is rendered inside of the, the entire web page that is rendered inside of the web view. And I'm accessing this element frame again, which is this iframe right here by ID, as I say, I gave it an ID frame. I'm accessing that and then I'm setting the source of the iframe to the Ready Player Me API. And this is given, this is given from the 
from the ducts. So now when I set that source, what happens is that the iframe now renders the content that is provided from this URL right here. So the URL is your subdomain dot ready player me and avatar frame API. Then I am listening, I am listening for events. So I am accessing the window object and then I'm adding an event listener for the messages that are coming from the ready player me SDK. And the, both events are, I am basically subscribing to, to the different events. And if you go over to the docs inside of 3D avatars, there should be some information about the different events that are provided from Ready Player Me. So here on the web tab integrations, it shows the different events that we, we, we can subscribe to. So the frame ready, subscription created, deleted, avatar exported, user set, and a bunch of other events that you can use. So that's what we're doing here. We are subscribing to those events. Then we are parsing those events using this parse method here, basically parse the JSON object that's retrieved. And then if the source is not ready to play me, then we basically bail out. Then for each event we are checking, we're saying, okay, if the event is that the frame is ready, then we can tell the frame content window and we can post a message. And post a message here is to send the message from the frame to those who are listening to this message. So we retrieve those messages and we post those messages. Then we have another event, which is whenever the avatar is exported, that is when you finish creating that avatar and it's stored in, in Ready Player Me's uh, database online. Whenever that avatar is exported, now we have access to the, the avatar URL. And here I'm console logging, even though this will not be seen in the web view because the web view doesn't log. So what, I'm happen what is happening here is that now I have access to the URL, the, the URL endpoint on Ready Player Me's uh, server where this avatar was created. And after that, I go ahead and this avatar created is the, the event that I am sending back to the Dart code the J inside of JavaScript. So here, inside of my JavaScript channel, you see I created this channel to receive messages or information from the JavaScript site inside of the HTML code. So I'm telling this to post a message and I'm basically sending back the entire JSON object for, of information about the avatar back to the Flutter code so I can use that information inside of the Flutter code. And after that's ready, then I basically hide the frame or the, the frame, the view that the avatar creator is rendered in. And a similar thing is happening here. And all of this is found inside the GitHub code here. I basically copy paste and modify a few things, more specifically the styling. So now that this is ready, what happens is that if we now run our code again, then we should see the avatar creator being rendered inside of our app. So now we have the avatar creator being rendered inside of our app. And once we create our avatar, all that information is now passed back to Flutter code using our channel that is created here. So inside of our iframe, where we say post this message, this message will now return to this channel, to this method on receive message. So now what we want to do when we receive the information from the HTML code that the avatar is created and all the information about the avatar, 
what we want to do is to now save that information using the shared preference and also transition to the profile screen, passing that information to be rendered on the profile screen. So I am basically going to access the shared preference as you can see, I do not have access to that here. So I'll need to create access to that shared preference. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass that inside the constructor. So where I have this title, I'm going to replace that with shared preferences. I'm going to make this slate. Let's remove the const here. And then I will initialize the shared preferences in the main and pass it down. Let's go ahead and see prefs. You'll get instant. And since it's async green to await. Let's make this method async. Then we'll need to use our widgets binding to ensure it's initialized before we can access any kind of um, async methods here or use the await. Then let's pass this prefs to our app inside of our app. Let's go ahead, initialize prefs. And I'll save final shared preference is prefs. On page, we do not need the title here. You can pass prefs, remove const. Remove const here. Then inside of we can see widget.prefs. Now we have our shared preferences there. Now we are basically setting the string avatar to the JSON object that is returned. So now let's go ahead and get our user and I'm going to say user equal I'm going to create a method called user from preps. And I'll pass the preferences there. Then if if a user exists, then now we can navigate to the user profile screen. But let's go ahead and create this method user from prefs inside of our util functions. So we'll go here. I've created this method user from prefs, which accept the prefs, then gets the avatar, gets the JSON object using the key avatar, and then basically strip the necessary information from the JSON object. In this case, the URL and the avatar ID. The avatar ID is a part of the URL, but it's the last part of the URL followed by the extension dot GLP. So what I've done here is to split the URL base on the slash. And then I know that the last part of the string has the ID. 
So I have simply replaced the .glb extension with empty string, then trim that to have the avatar URL. And I basically passed that as profile data, created a data class here called profile data, and I'll pass in the avatar ID along with the avatar URL. We could pass other things, but for now I've just hard coded those uh, information. So now back here, we see we get the user from prefs and now we can navigate to the profile screen. So I basically push the profile screen onto the navigator here uh, using the material route. And as you can see, there is an issue here that says do not use build context across async. And so to fix that issue, we simply say if if it's not mounted, mounted, if the current screen is not mounted, then we can simply return. And that will rectify that issue. So now we have our profile screen to create so that we can navigate to our profile screen. So let's go ahead and create that. Let's create a stateful widget. We'll call it profile. And this widget will accept the data. So let's go ahead, set required this data and this data will represent the, the profile data. So let's go ahead, add that there. We have our profile data that we access when we pass to our profile screen. So now inside of our state, we'll go ahead and access the, we'll create a web view again, because we'll be using a web view to render the 3D portion of it. So we'll have a web view, we'll have the API, we'll be using this API to access Ready Player Me 2D avatar renderer. So the API for the 2D renderer is API Ready Player Me V1 avatars. So that's the API we use to render the 2D image of our 3D avatar. We can also have a Boolean here that I'm just going to call is 3D and set that to false by default. And this is what we're going to work with in terms of the toggle to toggle between 3D and 2D. So for this, let's create here a scaffold. So we'll create this scaffold. Inside of our scaffold, we'll See, extend the body behind the up bar because we wanted to have that full screen feel. Then for the up bar itself, I want the transparent background and we want the system UI to be dark. Now, inside of the up bar also, I'm going to add some actions. And actions here is where I'm going to add the switches to switch between uh, 3D and 2D. So here I've added my action for uh, toggling the switch and I've basically give it some padding, use a size box to set the height and use my toggle switch there. I need to set the index and I need to set the state whenever I change the index. So I need to have a variable here called index, which defaults to zero. So now I have my toggle switch and my up bar. I can go ahead and set the body of the scaffold. So for the body, I am going to use a stack.
let's set the fit to expand and then for the children I am going to say for the children if it is 3d then what I want to render is the web view so I go ahead render that web view Again, let's set the JavaScript mode. So then if it is 3D, we render the web view with our HTML asset. In this case, I'm going to create another HTML asset called viewer. And this will be used to render the, the 3D uh, avatar. Then on page finished, here I want to say load the viewer so I fetch the asset but then when the page finished rendered that is the web view whenever this HTML page finished I am going to submit a method to the JavaScript to say render this avatar based on the URL that is passed here so that is if it is 3D else if it is 2d i'm simply going to render a network image in this case it will be the 2d url that's provided so i'm just going to say 2d url and cover so let's create this 2d url let's create a string here all that 2d url and then in our init function let's go ahead and set that so we'll say 2d url is equal to the api the provided api let's interpolate this so with the provided API along with the avatar ID so we'll get that from the widget widget dot data dot avatar ID dot PNG this is the URL that's required. And you can again check out the docs for that. So if you go to 2D avatars, it will give you the information how to request the 2D render um, using the appropriate URL. So now we have our 2D URL, we'll set our network image to that so that it will render that uh, 2D URL. And for my side of scaffold again, for the bottom sheet, this is where I am uh, rendering the user information so that the, the profile data is there, is displayed there. So all I've done for the bottom sheet here is to create a container that basically has a set of text, rich text. So I have a container, I have some padding, uh, some decoration, and I've set the height to 200. I have a column with a, co with a couple of text where I have one text span, which is the user's name, and I use a sort of 3D font from Google, Bungie Inline. Then there I append their user handle and I use the Poppins font for that. Then I give it some space and then I add the user email address here, give it some space and then the description of the user. So that's, that's basically the information that we are displaying for the user about the user in the bottom sheet so now we have 
our profile page we can go ahead and load that up but this still won't work because we do not have a viewer so if we run this now let's go ahead and run and see what will happen so we have our avatar created there but i'm not going to try and create the avatar because i know it's going to throw error because the viewer html file doesn't exist at the moment but if we go ahead and see let's add that to the asset so viewer dot html let's create some html so we created some html for the viewer let's go ahead and bring that up Let's create an avatar, select any avatar, next. I'm not going to modify, I'm just going to go next, continue. As you can see, if I go to 3D, then we have an error here. So there's a problem evaluating the JavaScript. Why? I, because I'm running a JavaScript method here that doesn't exist any at all so that javascript method doesn't exist no so we'll have error for the view but let's get rid of those and see if it will render the 2d image though as you can see it is rendering the 2d image but not the 3d image since we haven't created the viewer uh, to render the 3d image as yet so we'll look at creating that view and now so now back to our viewer code here again i'll be using another library here babylon js view i'll be using this to render the 3d avatar as you can see there's an example here where we simply add the javascript we access it from the cdn and then we tell it by what model to render by passing in the models url so let's do that so again i have copied and pasted the html code that has access to the babylon js viewer to render the 3d again these are some HTML syntax. We have our head. We have some different styling that has to do with the loader. So what is shown while the viewer is being loaded. We have a different bunch of different styling, which I'm not going to go through. You guys can simply uh, copy and paste this or get the code from GitHub since I'll be adding that there. But this is where the rendering happens inside of the this tag right here babylon so this accepts a different um, attributes that tells babylon js how to behave and in this case we see we have some attributes for camera again if you go over to the the documentation you can get more information regarding the viewer you have information about configuring the viewer you'll get more detailed information here how you can really custom customize the viewer to behave how you want it um, to behave so for now what i've done is to make it full screen also remove the default navigation here by overriding it with an empty div for the loading screen that is the default babylon js viewer loading screen I've set that to an empty string because I didn't want that loading screen to be shown. The same thing with the static image loading screen. And I've also set the loading screen uh, background to be white. So now we inside of our script type, this is where we access the, the CDN, the JavaScript file for the, the Babylon JS viewer. And now we have this is the method that we call from our profile screen. This method here. Where we say load the viewer that is to render the javascript 
and load the the load the JavaScript pass in the, the URL for the model so it can render the 3D model. So now we can in, so when we call this method, the first thing we do is to show the loading screen, loading screen. Then we access the Babylon JS viewer manager, which we can get by ID. So this is the this is the viewer here. And then since it's a promise, what we, whenever that promise resolves or whenever the it finish doing whatever it's supposed to do, then we can add a function. Again, these are all things in the documentation. I simply copy and paste to observe the view. And then we attach a scene. We add a function that accepts a scene. And then we can say viewer, whenever that completes, load the model. And we pass in the URL here, which is the URL for our or avatar from Ready Player Me. Then when it finished loading the model, then we post a message here that the model is loaded successfully. As you can see, we have this method, which is show loading screen, which is basically we access an HTML using the selector, uh, query selector, and then we set the inner text to say loading or we add a class there. But the main thing is here, loading the model here. And then this method that we have created here, we attach it to the window object so that we can access it from our Dart uh, code. So now we can say window.loadViewer and pass in the avatar URL so that it will load our avatar. So now if we go ahead and run this again we already have our avatar created as we are rendering it in uh, 2d but now we should be able to access it from 3d and render it there so we have our 2d avatar and if we go to 3d we should see the loader happening there so it's fetching the 3d object from Ready Player Me, then it renders that 3D object. And there are more things that can be done with this in the sense that you can adjust the camera so that it, it zooms more onto the, the player. You can even create your own custom uh, viewer using Babylon JS so that you can apply uh, animations to the 3D uh, so that users can add their own custom animation or bring it to life somewhere where the avatar is breathing or smiling that sort of thing so this is just uh, just an introduction but you guys can dive more into it and add a bunch of things to make your profile screen more attractive to the user and the thing about using uh, ready player me is that with ready player me the avatars are accessible across various platforms. So they create the avatar one place and they can access it at the same avatar across various apps. So you would want your user, again, in order for them to edit their avatar, they would have to create an, a, a Ready Player Me account with that avatar so that they can edit the avatar. As you see, I, did, I haven't added anything to edit here but they would have to have that account so that they can edit the avatar in the avatar creator and the changes will be reflected here. So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you enjoyed, remember to give a thumbs up, like the video, share the video, and I'll see you in the next one. So thank you for watching and for checking out this video.